Hello, my name is Yusuf Kende Wolabi. I am a student of World Quant University, studying for a master's degree in financial engineering. I'm here to present to you the topic of my capstone project. The topic is volatility and risk, expected shortfall as an alternative risk measure to value at risk. My group is group 12, and my group members are Yusuf Kende Wolabi, Hamza Umar, and Justin Guatizo. This is my government issued photo ID, national ID card, which I display in real time at the start of this recording. Project goal and importance. We have undertaken this project with the goal of developing on the shortcomings of the various VAR calculation methods. These methods include historical simulation, variance covariance, and Monte Carlo simulation. And bridging the set gap using the expected shortfall model. The goal of this project is to develop a risk measure that encompasses all loan circumstances while being mathematically simple and that does a better job at quantifying risks than VR. This project also aims at subjecting the new risk metric to rigorous stress testing during periods of stock market boom and crash to confirm its resilience. Literature review. Some of the materials we laid heavily on in this project, just some of them are as sub 2002 work on expected shortfall, a natural coherent alternative to value at risk. Discuss the coherence properties of expected shortfall as a financial risk measure and also compared several alternative representations of ES which turn out to be more appropriate for certain purposes. Next, we have due 2017 in backtesting expected shortfall, accounting for tail risk, where they pose the biggest problem in the application of the ES as the leading indicator of market risk to be the lack of straightforward method for its evaluation and thus propose backtests for ES based on cumulative evaluations, which are the natural analog of the commonly used backtest for VAR. And lastly, Kena 2016 in quantifying market risk with value at risk or expected shortfall. Consequences for capital requirement and model risk. Analyze how both risk measures react to different sources of model risk in order to better understand the impact of the internet change in risk measures. And they were able to demonstrate that expected shortfall with a confidence level of 0.975 is more sensitive towards regulatory arbitrage and parameter miss specification. Assumptions and choice of technology. The technology we chose to use here in carrying out our research work is Python and data used in this analysis is sourced from Yahoo Finance using a Python package. As the analysis includes the data points not much in the past, the availability of the data when was not an issue. Also, the data was checked for staleness and outliers and was found to be fit for analysis. While there are three established methods for calculating value at risk, which are the historical simulation, the various covalence method, and the Monte Carlo simulations, almost 85% of banking institutions in the world use historical simulation approach to for calculating their VAR leveraging on their own historical returns. In this analysis, we follow the industry prevalence method and use historical simulation method. The COVID-19 pandemic's influence on the market was not felt evenly across sectors, with certain industries such as hospitality, tourism, and travel being affected greatly, while others such as technology, education, and communication witnessed a significant increase in income and profits. Peer review feedback. During the peer review process, we did not receive any critical feedback from our peers as the draft submitted vowed them to give us a thumbs up. Summary of results. The chart above showed the movement of VR and expected shortfall over the normal period and the stress period. While the VAR and the HES reduced from around 30,000 to 34,000 respectively at the start of the non-stress period, this attribute dropped significantly during the stress period and continued to remain at the same level. Also, the difference between the VAR and the HES during the stress period widened on accounting of extreme moves. While February to March of 2020 was truly a stress period, for the, for the global economy. The number of backtesting exceptions observed for VAR is more than the ES over 50 days backtesting window. Expected shortfall increased on account of huge volatilities, factoring extreme shocks while VAR could adapt only a little. In the course of this study, our primary objective was to determine whether or not value at risk or expected shortfall is a superior risk metric. We analyzed the, the performance of these risk measures during both normal and, and stress periods. The stress period in this instance was the era of the 
COVID-19 pandemic. The results indicate that expected shortfall captures losses better than value at risk during both normal and stress periods. Despite the fact that VR is more commonly used in the field of quantitative finance, our research made substantial headway in the area of quantitative finance, which is notable given the paucity of previous research on the use of expected shortfall in quantitative finance, both during normal and stress period. There has been a, there has been very little study conducted on the effect of COVID-19 pandemic, and the primary emphasis of our investigation was on determining how losses were quantified using both risk metrics my contribution. In the course of our research, we split our work. I and Justice were in charge of the theoretical aspect of this work. Why Hamza was in charge of the data analysis portion of the work. I work with the introduction, literature review, writing and formatting of the work, references style of the work in, in this case, I2P format was adopted, grammar check and similarity check as well. We were all actively participating in the process of supervising each other's work and developed the final presentation together. Conclusion. In summary, we analyzed the securities which were mainly affected during the COVID pandemic area like those in airline business as travel was restricted like Delta Airlines, those in hotel and tourism business like Delta and Marriott Hotels, and we also picked an exchange traded fund ETF called Rhodium for comparison. From our analysis, it can be seen that from the normal period, returns were normally distributed as shown in figure 1 in our reports, while during the stress period, they were not. We can see that EAS had performed VER for both periods, stress and non-stress. Therefore, we can conclude that EES is a superior risk measure than VAR, even in terms of stress market circumstances, as shown by the back testing results. Feature scope of the work. Though most financial institutions are adopting EES as the industry standard risk measure, it still comes with its, with its own shortfalls. Major one being its lack of elicitability, which is a scoring function for a risk measure that can be used to compare models when that when that risk measure is, is used. There is a new risk measure that can be adopted which is both coherent and elicitable, known as expertise. Though we did not dive deep into them in this research, expertise combined the elicitability of VAR and the coherence of expected shortfall. Thank you for listening. God bless.